it's me. Hello, hello. Um, let me just open one thing that I forgot to open. And I will be right with you. So, so yeah, people, get comfortable, get a glass of water, get something, because we're going to have some fun learning stuff. Yeah. And today I asked what people wanted to see. And apparently people want to know how to make uh, brushes. So we're going to learn how to make textures and brushes and whatnot. So that's like my rough plan for the day. But like if you have any other things you would like to see, then you can just tell me and I will let you know. Yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the chat because I can answer those. In the meantime, let me show you what we have here. <clears throat> so I'll get a little brush. All right. So, hi, my name is Mary F, but usually people call me Z on the internet. It's a crown. If you don't know me, I'm the little bird who likes to make tutorials on YouTube, the big eyelashes, the crazy cool haircut. But actually, it's like that. Yeah, and today I'm going to show you how to make brushes and other stuff, if that's what you want. Amazing. So, um, if you want to make brushes in the software, you have to get textures. And then you can kind of like make them into a brush. So first, beforehand, there's something we need to settle. There's a difference between a brush, brush, and a pencil. So right off a brush, what you draw is what you get. You can't really like bend it or like it. Well, you can bend it, but you can't edit like the line size or something. Um, like you can bend it with. A center line editor kind of sometimes it gets some little weird things happening in there but like it's not exactly meant for that whereas the pencil is really meant to be like banded in many different ways and it's all good also the pencil is great because you can like change the size after you drew the lines which you cannot do with a brush sadly so yeah so the way that you create those is different First, for a brush, um, for a brush, what you will need to do is get an image that is usually square, and that image needs to be white. Actually, it needs to be pure white. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah, pure white. And then on that drawing, you make any kind of shape that you want. So that could be my brush tip. So that is a brush tip. Like that. I'm going to make this all pretty. Phenomenal. And it needs to be black on white because the black is going to be what is 100% opaque. And what is gray is going to be less opaque. And what is, what is white doesn't appear. So if this was like my brush tip, if I would just paste it once without dragging my cursor, that's what I would get. So anything that is white would disappear. Anything that is gray would be kind of transparent. Okay. That's how you do these brush tips. And then when you edit your brushes, there's so many things you can customize in there. That's something we're going to see later. And now for the pencil, it's different, but a bit similar. 
So when you have a brush, you have like your brush tip that you kind of drag around and that's how you do your artwork. It's not procedural, so it doesn't need to repeat because like what people don't know usually is that for a brush, um, it's basically like just taking your thing like I have here, do, 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 do. but because your spacing is really close, when you paint, it's like you have one stroke, but that's because like, you have thousands of little dots like that in here. So it's the same. So they don't need to kind of be seamless because it's kind of the same thing posted one after the other. Yeah. Right, and the more spacing you have, the more, you know, spaced out they are. On the other hand, for the pencil, it's procedural. Like it's one kind of texture that just keeps going. So I'm going to show you that with one of the texture right here. And don't forget, if you want, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. And I'm going to check it out because this is just a temporary subject. Like I might change subject in five seconds if there's another subject that comes around. Um, so if I take um, this line texture right here and I make a straight line down, Maybe longer because I want to see my texture repeat. Can I get my texture to repeat? How big is that texture? What did I do? Guess I'll just have to do it the hard way. Shorten the texture. Always set your autosave, people. It saves lives. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to see it repeat. Okay. So you see, I made this texture for the stream just so that we could see where it repeats. Okay, so that's the pencil texture. And instead of being the same kind of spot that you keep, you know, repeating, it's more like a um, section that as you draw your, your, your pencil line, that thing will get repeated and repeated like as you go. Like that. Um, so you need it to be seamless. This one I didn't make it seamless because I wanted to be able to show it on stream. Like you see where the texture repeats. But usually if you have another kind of texture that is actually well done, <laughs> um, you wouldn't see the seam like this one. I think this one is not doesn't have a seam. Yeah, this one doesn't have a seam, so you cannot know where it starts and where it begins, because I was careful. But usually, to do that sort of things, you need a software that supports. Like you can, if you go to most painting software, they have a thing that's called offset, where there you can make like a line, and then it's gonna kind of offset it so that you see where it's going to repeat and not look nice like you're gonna see this thing happening here and then you can just kind of um make it less appearing that it's gonna repeat um but oftentimes people are like oh but you can't do that in harmony but actually you can so i'm gonna show you how uh, to do it uh, in harmony so to do your own pencil textures uh more or less in harmony so to do that i did a super simple thing. So let me just remove my test things here. So it's pretty, pretty easy and easy to use and stuff. If you are very, if you're really like um, in need to do your textures in harmony, which sometimes it happens, like you're in a hurry and you only have one software. So what I have here is what seems to be an infinite line. And if I take my line layer and I draw something, it's going to repeat forever. So I'm going to show you that here. If I have a big line and I draw something like this, I'm going to see where it repeats. Ta -da! Ta -da! And stuff. So uh, by doing this, you can kind of do a 
thing and it will repeat. For now, I did it only from left to right and I didn't add, usually, I forgot, you, you would need like a cutter that cuts the camera so you don't get these overlaps, but I'm gonna fix it later. Um, if you get uh, two pegs, just you just put them side by side, then this is how you would get your things to be seamless. So I'm just gonna remove those. Here, so usually I would just have this like that. But if I want to see how it repeats to make it seamless, now I would need to just add uh, the same. So I, I copy and pasted these layers, copy and pasted, and then I just gave them a peg just to put them side by side um, like this. They're side by side, and because I gave them a rectangle um, in their, sorry, my screen is a bit small. Um, I gave them like these uh, square so that I can know if they're aligned or not. And then you just have to align them. It takes five seconds. And once you did it once, you don't have to redo it, which is great. Yay! But then this is how you would get your line to repeat. And then what you export will only be this. So, of course, now this looks stupid. <laughs> Let me just fix it. I'm going to remove everything. So, usually you would follow your guide, which is this line here. This is a straight line. And if I wanted to make a pencil texture, what I would do is I would take, for example, any brush texture that I like. I would just start to trace something. And if I go overboard, you're going to see that it's going to repeat on the other side like this, I'm gonna show you. So if I go overboard, I repeat on the other side. So that means that if I take this image and I put it one after the other, um, it will be seamless. So this is how you would get your seamless pencil texture directly in harmony without having to go to another um, software. So I'm just gonna do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna make it really big so that we can actually see it when I put it into the pencil. And when I do this, then I just have to export it. I'm going to export it on frame two, because frame one was already something else. And uh, then if I take a pencil, uh, the, down, the only downside with this is that once I go to my drawing, it's coming, give it a second. My computer is a bit slow today. Maybe it's because it's hot. Um, there we go. So in my folder, I have my two textures. Uh, the little downside with this is that once you export from Harmony, because your camera is so big, um, you can't like cut it just to see your artwork. So you might need to open it in another software and just make it smaller. Or you can just take your camera, but that's a bit uh, longer steps. Like I wouldn't do it like that. Scene settings. Then you need to kind of make your camera more thin but I think that's too much uh, uh, for the needs. Uh, oops, that's not the right page. Let me go back to the thing. Okay, there I am back. So that's the only kind of annoying thing is that you will need to open it in another software quickly, like paint or something just to uh, crop, um, just to crop here what is too much. But even so, if I import it just to show you, I'm gonna get my pencil. I'm gonna go, um, so you get your pencil tool, you go to your pencil properties, you click on the triangle here. Then you go on the plus sign to add a new texture. 
then you just find your file like this and then this is my pencil line so then to test it in my scene i have my test layer which is right here so i'm going to activate it and i'm going to deactivate everything else of course you could put that into a backdrop just to make everything easier but yes and now this is my test thing i'm going to get my pencil with my new texture and right and then you get your um pencil I didn't place, I think I moved my peg when I gave the example, so there is a little seam, but I'm just going to fix it for my next uh, output. Um, oh, I'm so silly. This is because I forgot to remove <laughs> my guide. Let me just redo the export. It's going to take a second. Oops. Um, yeah, so note to self. Like, And by the way, people, making mistakes is a normal part of life. Don't worry. If you make mistakes, you, it just means you're a human, okay? So what I did is I forgot, before I export, I forgot to um, turn my guides off, like these little rectangles. So that's what you see showing up. Um, it's my square. So to prevent that from happening in the future, I will use a visibility node. Visibility nodes are great because you can use them to have things show just in OpenGL and not in render. So I'm going to uncheck the render. And I'm going to give that to all of my little drawings down there, just to make sure that I never <laughs> make this mistake again. And I'm just going to re-export. It'll be all good. <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Now it should work. And after that, I'm going to check the chat for questions. There we go. Now it should be better. There you go. Now I have my seamless pencil textures. Just to show, that's actually good because then I can just show you the difference between the two. So the top one is the good one. That is seamless and beautiful. And then you have the one where I made a mistake. Which you don't see from far away, but if I make it bigger, you're going to see it. So yeah, always be careful when you do your stuff. But hey, teaching moment. We can see where my texture actually repeats. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So let me see the chat real quick. Oh, there's so many comments. Oh, it's my pleasure, Sioban Catino. Will this be available to watch after the stream? Yes. Oh, Tibu already answered. That's so great. It will be available so sometimes after, eventually, on YouTube. <laughs> Yay. Would, would being good at 2D art make you better at 3D rendering too? I think so. I think so. Being a good 2D artist made me a better 3D renderer way back when I used to do 3D. I don't anymore, but I used to. Because it gives you like a sensibility for colors and for composition too. And like, there's a lot of things that people don't know when they do 3D. They just expect the machine to do everything for them. And uh, just if I make a little sidetrack very quick, uh, because this can be useful for both 2D and 3D. So <laughs> let's do this. So one way that it's useful to be a good 2D artist, like um, in 3D, it's just how you kind of study like color and how it interacts because if you have a beautiful character, so I'm going to draw my favorite character. It is a slime boy. If you follow my streams, you've probably seen that thing more than once because it's my favorite thing to draw. So that's my little slime dude. He has a crown and sometimes he's good nice because he's happy to see you all. Okay, so that's my slime dude. Of course, I put my line on the color, right? I always do that. See, that just proves I'm a human being because I make mistakes all the time. Okay, I'm going to give it some little colors. Fantastic. Uh, what did I do? No, I made a mistake again. <laughs> human, I swear. Not an alien, not a robot. I am but a bird. Okay, so that's my little dude with its 
insides are all the same color. He's just made of goo, so don't overthink it. He's not pretty complicated. And he has a crown. Amazing. Okay. So sometimes when you render 3D, you kind of assume that the software is going to do everything, but it's not true. So if my character is being lit by a light, that's a light. <laughs> and if the light is red, or yeah, red ish, pink. And it lights my character. So of course my character is gonna get like red all over it, which is gonna turn purple because color theory. And actually it's even more complicated than that because sometimes color absorbs other colors. So it's just a great nightmare. I love rendering and doing that. But some people also don't know that, um, yes, light can create a color like that. But also, if my character is standing right by a green wall, so like if the wall uh, beside him is green, I'm going to remove my light. OK, so what I was saying is that for 3D rendering and stuff, don't forget that if your character is being lit by the sun, yes, it's like that. and then if it's standing by a green background, don't forget that the sun rays that are kind of light in color are going to bounce on the wall and bounce back as green. I mean, it's not, not going to be as sharp as if it was literally lit by a green light, but it's always going to give it a little bit of color. And that's very important to remember when you paint or render or do anything that has to do with lights, which a 3D render does. Um, right, so let's see what I did after. Um, after that, we were talking about auto patch. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Because someone had a question about auto patch not working. And all I want to say is that um, remember that when you connect your auto patch to your setup, the auto patch are in red. When you do an auto patch setup, it's always the line art being cut by the auto patch. And you know, if you just cut the line art by its own auto patch, it's not good. <laughs> the auto patch need, need to go cut the other side. So like this, and then like this. And here you're gonna see that they're gonna cross. So if they cross, oops. They cross, you're good. So, and if, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just check out this video that I'm going to put in the chat right now. Um, it's a very, very important one. There we go. I'm going to put it in both streams here and also here. Right there. Okay. Um, so that's for the auto patch. You don't forget to check this out because it's important. I was also saying that your auto patch should never be used in turn in like in place of a color art because sometimes I see people just ditching the oops, just ditching the color art altogether, saying that like oh yeah it's fine because my auto patch can do the color art instead. If you do that, you're in for trouble because it means that all your shapes are going to get this nasty little anti-aliasing uh, thing coming when you zoom and it's not pretty. So don't do that. Like it's going to make your shape kind of look, um, oops, <laughs> kind of look like that. 
and it's ugly, so you don't want that. Um, okay, next thing I talked about before we left was people were asking, why would you use different kinds of brushes? I would use different kind of brushes for different things. Sometimes I prefer to sketch with certain brushes and clean up and stuff. So for rough, I love, 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 love to use the tilt pencil because if I hold my pencil from the side, it's going to be more pale. And if I hold it up straight, it's going to be like thinner and smaller. So from the side and straight looking like at the screen or something. Um, what I would suggest, though, is that if you're doing rough, you don't really care what brush you're using. As long as it's light, like, don't use a too big of a brush tip for rough because it's not useful. Like, you're going to discard these drawings anyway, so don't make them too big. But for cleanup, I would get a very high-resolution brush just to make sure that you have pretty textures. Also, another thing that is important, if it's rough, it doesn't matter if it's dark or not because it's rough. But when you clean up, I do recommend trying to go for a darker brush because if it's too pale, you're going to get this that happens because you're going to get your line art and then under it, your color art, which is usually made in vector because there's so many advantages. Like the advantages of using color, a vector art, pure vector for your color, like outdo the negative by a thousand like it's very great however it gives you a boring flat edge like i do think that it would be prettier <laughs> if my lines were cleaned up with a little texture right it would be less kind of boring but like i said it's it's a lot more work because <laughs> it means that you're gonna have to clean and paint your cells just like the old days like one by one and if you want to do that it's great it's artful it's taste it's it looks great but it's gonna be hell to do like it's gonna take so forever because you won't be able to use the bucket tool as easy so what i was saying is that you could also do something that i did for one little short that i made where i wanted to have a very transparent line and stuff so what i was about to show before like the stream went down so I hope it's not down now. It's not a curse or something. So I have my layer. I have my line art and my color art. They're separated. I'm going to show you this. If I remove my color, boop, I don't see my color line. So they're on their own level, which means I can take my color art and do whatever I want with it. So one thing you can do, and I'm going to go into render view to uh, show you. So that means I need a color card. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do with this is take my color art and give it kind of a rugged edge. To do that, you take a turbulence node. The turbulence node is a node that is kind of not used enough, I think, because people are scared of it, because it doesn't make sense. It, do it doesn't make a lot of sense when you take it for the first time. But with this, uh, you are able to um, bend a shape like that. So now it's not exactly what I want, but I can just make it a bit bigger, maybe. Oh, it's starting to look somewhat better. Uh-huh, that's cool. And the amount, you can just change how it works. But then, you see, now it's already better, and it's not that heavy. So if I turn it off, it's boring. If I turn it on, it's great. So that's how I would uh, kind of solve the problem of vector being boring under my line work that is transparent. Um, and I can show you quickly how to use a turbulence node unless I get another question that is better. Um, oh, butts and magic. I love these emotes. They're so great. And um, I don't think we have a lot of more questions. And we have like 10 minutes left. So I think I'm going to do the turbulence thing go. Yeah, OK, no questions. So we're all good.
And hello, uh, Ian Kojakaru from Romania. It's great that you're watching. Yeah. Okay, so how do you use a turbulence node? No, 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 no. So to do it is pretty easier than you thought, <laughs> I swear. But to understand the turbulence, you need to understand turbulent noise. These things are a bit different. One is an element node because it's dark blue, uh, it's light blue, and the other one is an effect node. The difference is that the turbulence alone is nothing. It needs to kind of be attached to something to see it. Whereas the turbulent noise can be can be something on its own. So if I just connect my turbulent noise, I get nothing for now because I didn't put any settings in it. So it's just great. A little pro tip, you don't need to connect it to see it. You can also just open it like this, boop, and see the, re the rectangle here. And this is this is what you would see in render. So you don't need to connect it. You can just look it at a side. And the reason why I'm bringing a turbulent noise is because if you open the turbulent noise and the turbulence side by side, well, what do you know? They're kind of exactly the same, kind of. Frequency, offset, evolution, and like the noise type and whatnot, they're all the same. So I've been compositing for a couple of years now, so I kind of know things. But when I was just starting out, I had no idea what a Perlin or a like fractional Brownian mean. I was like, what is that, a brownie or something? So what I would do is I would take the turbulent, I kind of figured I could take the turbulent noise and uh, I'm going to put give it more frequency, maybe 10. And you see, this is what I see. So the frequency is how much of the multi you're going to see. And then the Perlin and fractional Brownian, this is just how the texture looks. There's many different styles of them. If you want to know exactly what they do, you can check out the documentation on it. I am not going to show you that today because we have 10 minutes. But yeah, so there are many different shapes, and these shapes are going to change the way that your drawing is deformed. So just to play with the noise type, uh, we're going to see this here um, with my turbulence, so the one that is affecting my drawing right now. So if I change this, you're going to see it's going to change the shape. Because if I put it to Perlin, it's the one that kind of looked, I'm going to show you. So the Perlin looks like this, so that's why I get a rugged edge. But the sinusoidal, sinusoidal, <laughs> that one, looks like checkered. So that's why if I take my turbulence, um, this one, if I take my turbulence and I set it to sinusoidal, I'm going to get something that is way more wavy because it's using this as its waves. And if I get the one that is called rocky, it's a bit more like sharp black and white. So that's why I get very sharp edges. I hope it makes sense for now. <laughs> and also the frequency is kind of how many times this is going to repeat. So if I get my frequency to 10, it's like that. If I set it to 1, it's very zoomed in. If I get it to 100, it's like a snowstorm, right? So it's the same in my turbulence. If my frequency is 10, then it's like this. But if I set it to 100, I'm going to get something that is a bit more hairy because I get more textures in my screen. And the, you know, the big difference between the turbulence and the turbulent noise is that the turbulence has the, the amount. The reason why the turbulent noise doesn't have it is because it's just a noise. It's just a visual thing. -o. But the turbulence takes that visual and kind of bends the shape following this. So by following the black and white values of this, it's going to kind of bend your art a certain way. A bit like a refraction, but not quite. It's just like bending it. It's the best word I can use for it. Um, so if I take five, it's going to take this and turbulate it for five amount. And then if you stake a hundred, then it's gonna use this and turbulate it times a hundred. So usually it's a lot. And yeah, it's not always pretty, but it's kind of cool. Um, so depending on the effect that you want, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just, you have to play with it. And that is true for any type of compositing. You have to be curious. You have to taste and try stuff because 
you can follow any types of tutorial, but the tutorial is going to give you a solution for this exact thing and not for every um, thing. So you have to kind of explore and learn on your own. Now, let me see the Twitch if there's any questions. These fractal type names could be indie band names. You are absolutely right. Like Rocky and the Fractional Brownian or like... Um, Perlin and Vert Threshold, these could be indie band. Yeah, I see it 100%. Um, we still have five minutes. Anyone else has a last question? Or I can just keep going on my turbulent, turbulent, turbulating rant. I don't mind. <laughs> turbo turbo and tutorial, let's go. Okay, well, we still have five minutes, so I'm gonna go for it. Um, so the other thing that is cool with this is that, as you can see with the turbulent noise, there's many different types of things you can do. And like in my tutorial about sun rays, if you want to make sun rays or something, if you want to make something that is not square shape, just know that by default everything is locked. But you can click separate. And if you separate something, it means that you, if I put 10 and 10, so if my X and my Y are 10, I'm going to get something that is kind of square. So I'm going to use this sinusoidal to show you. So like this is a square. And because it's not precise enough, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in complexity. I'm just going to pump it up a little more. No, that's not it. I've, no, it's not a complexity. I think it's the game. I forgot which one it is. Yeah, I forgot which one it is for preciseness. It's been a while, okay? But there's one that's going to give you... I think it's subscaling. I forgot. Like, that's great. Anyway, there's a way to make it more uh, precise, and I forgot which one it is. So, um, yeah, okay, it is complexity. I knew it. I don't know why it wasn't working. I think my screen froze. So you see now there is more and more details. Don't pump up the complexity too much because it's it makes it times and times heavier. But for my example, it's going to be easier to show it to you with this. So X and Y is 10. If I put it to 5 instead, both of them, I would get just the bigger checkers. OK, so that's uh, what it is. But then if you can see here, um, if I take this and instead of putting 10, 10, I put 0 and then 10. Um, not 0, I mean 1 and then 10. I'm going to get like straight lines um, happening like this. Or like maybe 100. Yeah, now I'm going to see straight line because they're kind of getting stretched instead of being the same size. So if you want something more like a grid, like I use this effect to make... Um, I know in the past I used this effect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I did with it. Um, it's okay. I still have four minutes for my tangent. Bear with me. So if I had a character. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go get my little um, guy here. Yeah, this one. If I had this guy. Oops. I need both of my art layers. Thank you. was in the center of my screen. If I wanted to make it like a sci-fi TV screen or something, you could take this and use this turbulent noise to kind of give it an effect. So to do that, I'm going to get a little composite right here with this turbulent noise. And then I'm going to use this texture to kind of make an overlay on top of my character. So I'm going to use a blending node with this. And... Uh, Go into my render view, otherwise we don't see it. So you see this thing? You can also take a peg to shrink stuff, just so you know. Like that. All right, so that would be like my computer screen thingy. And then you can use this and just give it a blending node. And I'm going to set it to overlay. 
And you see, now I have a computer screen. Woo! So cool. And you can have it like um, move up like a computer screen with my peg. Like that, maybe more. And, uh, yeah, it should. It should work if I make a quick little render. Look, I have a TV screen. I think it's going to be too fast, but, you know, it's the intention that counts. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty neat. So I don't know how we went from textures to making a sci-fi TV screen, but that's what happens during my live stream and I hope everybody had fun. And if there's no other questions, I guess I'll see you another time. Let me check the chat. I think we're all good. And to make it even nicer though, we could even put it like, give it like a glow because everything is better with a glow behind it because it's cheap and it's fun. We use that to give it a glow. Use source color, let's go. Yeah, BB, now it's glowing. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it. I definitely like it. It's really cool. I know what I'm going to do some time soon for a tutorial because that's cool. And um, yeah, so with that, I will see you in another stream. Yay! Goodbye.